Welcome to the WatchGuard FireCluster eLearning video. Today I'll show you what is required to set up and configure a FireCluster, how to view the status of a FireCluster, and what can trigger a FireCluster to fail over. You can use WatchGuard FireCluster to configure two XTM devices as a cluster to increase network performance and scalability, and to prevent network disruptions if a hardware or software failure should occur. Before I show you how to configure a Fire Cluster, there are a few important things you should know. When clustering two XTM devices, they must be the same model and must use the same version of FireWare XTM OS. I want to point out that each device in a Fire Cluster must have an active live security subscription. Also, each pair of active traffic interfaces must be connected to a separate switch or VLAN. And finally, to configure a Fire Cluster, we recommend that you use WatchGuard System Manager's Policy Manager because it isn't possible to set up or manage a Fire Cluster with the FireWare XTM Web UI. Before we look at the Fire Cluster configuration in the UI, let's review some Fire Cluster terminology. An XTM device that is part of a Fire Cluster is called a cluster member. Each cluster has two members, the cluster master and the backup master. The Cluster Master updates and maintains the cluster's connection and session information. It synchronizes that information with the Backup Master, which monitors the Cluster Master and automatically takes over the Cluster Master role in the event of a failover. When building a Fire Cluster, you have two configuration options. You can configure an Active-Passive Fire Cluster or an Active-Active Fire Cluster. In an Active-Passive Fire Cluster, the active device handles all of the network traffic. If it fails over, the passive device takes over the connections assigned to the failed device. Because the traffic load is handled by only one device at a time, an active-passive cluster provides redundancy but not increased scalability. In an active-active fire cluster, the cluster devices share the traffic that passes through the cluster. The cluster master assigns the connections. If one cluster member fails, the second device takes over the connections assigned to the failed XTM device and handles the whole load. To increase both redundancy and load sharing on your network, you'll want to set up an active-active cluster. When you configure a Fire Cluster, you need to assign a cluster ID number to identify it. The default ID number is 1. While the cluster ID may seem trivial, there are times when it can become very important. For example, if you use certain third-party routers in your network that rely on VRRP to get their network IDs, it is possible that the ID they receive can conflict with your Fire Cluster ID. I recommend reviewing the Fire Cluster help for more information. Each device in a Fire Cluster must have its own feature key. When you enable a Fire Cluster, the subscription services, VPN licenses, and upgrades activated for cluster members operate in a specific way based on your Fire Cluster configuration. While each device in a Fire Cluster must have an active live security subscription, licenses for other features is dependent upon which type of Fire Cluster you enable. For example, in an active-passive fire cluster, only one XTM device is active at a time, so that XTM device uses the subscription services that are active for either cluster member. For an active-active cluster, both devices must have active licenses for the same set of subscription services, such as web blocker, application control, gateway antivirus, and so forth. For more information on how licensing is handled with fire cluster, I recommend reviewing the fire cluster help. Before enabling Fire Cluster, make sure that you have the hardware required to configure your Fire Cluster, you've planned the IP addresses and interfaces to use, and you have disabled any unused interfaces in the configuration file. For this demonstration, I'll use these interfaces and IP addresses, and I'll connect the interfaces like this. If you configure an active-passive cluster like I will in a moment, make sure that your network interfaces are configured in mixed routing or drop-in mode. To configure an active-active cluster, your network interfaces must be configured in mixed routing mode. Fire Cluster does not support bridge network mode. To configure Fire Cluster, you can either run the Fire Cluster Setup Wizard or you can configure Fire Cluster manually. For this demonstration, I'll use Fire Cluster Setup Wizard. To configure Fire Cluster, open WatchGuard System Manager and connect to the XTM device that has the configuration you want to use for the cluster. Start the Fire Cluster Setup Wizard. Click Tools, Policy Manager, Fire Cluster, Setup. Next, I'll select Active Passive as my cluster type. 
If you're setting up more than one fire cluster on the same Layer 2 broadcast domain, type a unique cluster ID here. Otherwise, you can accept the default setting of 1, which is what I'll do. If I was setting up an active-active cluster, I'd also need to choose a load balance method here. Next, I need to select the cluster interfaces, which are used to connect the cluster members to each other. A primary interface is required, and a backup interface is recommended for redundancy. The default primary is the highest interface number, which in my case is 6. I'll set interface 5 as my backup cluster interface. Next, I need to select the Interface for Management IP address here. You use this interface to connect directly to Fire Cluster members for maintenance. It isn't a dedicated management interface. You can use it for other traffic as well. I'll use interface number 1. Next, I'll add the feature key, member name, and serial number for this XTM device. Because I entered the feature key for my first XTM330 device during the Quick Setup Wizard, that feature key automatically appears here. I'll accept the member name of member 1. The serial number appears automatically based on the feature key and can't be edited. Now I need to enter my primary and backup cluster interface IP addresses for the first device. For my primary, I'll use 10.10.6.1/24. And for my backup, I'll use 10.10.5.1/24. When setting up your Fire Cluster, it is important that you don't set the primary or backup cluster IP addresses to the default IP address of any interface on the device. The default interface IP addresses are in the range from 10.0.0.1 through 10.0.13.1. The management IP address is a unique IP address used to connect an individual XTM device while it is configured as part of a Fire Cluster. Each cluster member must have a unique management IP address. I'll use 10.10.1.1/24 for member number 1. Now it's time to set up the second XTM device that will be part of my fire cluster. I'll add the feature key for the second device here. And just like before, I'll accept the default member name. Now I need to enter the primary and backup IP addresses for this cluster member. They must be different than the IP addresses I used for the first device, but on the same subnet. This time, I'll set my primary IP address to 10.10.6.2/24 and my backup IP address to 10.10.5.2/24. And my management IP address is 10.10.1.2/24. When I click Next, I can review the configuration summary, which includes the options I selected and the interfaces that are monitored for link status. When I click Finish, the Fire Cluster Configuration dialog box appears. As you can see here, I have a primary and backup interface and have set up an active passive cluster. Before I save the configuration, I need to make sure the network cables are connected to match my configuration, and I need to start my second device in safe mode. Once that is done, I can save the Fire Cluster configuration like this. Notice here that a copy of the configuration file is also saved locally. I'll go ahead and click Yes. Now that the file is saved, I can monitor my Fire Cluster using Firebox System Manager. To do this, I need to select the device in WatchGuard System Manager, and then click Tools, Firebox System Manager. Here you can see my fire cluster. I'll click the expand icons 